Hello friends, welcome back to another episode. So I'm in El Paso, Texas. I'm right on the border. I'll show you here in a second. I'll turn the camera. But I'm just a few feet away from the Mexico border here in El Paso. I'm at Frontier Foods and Cold Storage Incorporated. And I want to give a big shout out to the owners who allow aerosol artists from all over Mexico and the United States to come here once per year, an event that's called Borderland Jam. And uh, I've calculated on Google Maps the, the length of the walls. There's actually 0.51 miles, a little bit more than a half a mile of wall from, from this building. It's bounded, right, by four streets. Then they have an additional building, which is a few more feet. But when you add it all up, it's about a half a mile of wall, and it's nothing but a blank canvas every year for aerosol artists to, to come here and paint. So I'm, the reason I'm here today is I'm testing two cameras, okay? We have the Fujifilm Instax Wide, which is a, uh, a larger than the Mini, of course. It's twice the size of the Instax Mini. This is the 300, Instax 300. And I have the new Polaroid One Step 2, which is basically a revival of the camera from 1977. It even kind of looks like it, okay? Uh, so we have the, this is a, a one, this is kind of rectangular, which lends itself to landscape in this mode. If you turn it, you can do portraiture, but this is square. This is a one by one Richard Avedon, uh, your classic Roloflex, right, which is six by six, and your Hasselblad 500, which is also six by six. So those are the classic portrait cameras, of the, you know, 1950s or 60s or whatever, and it gave that beautiful one-to-one -one aspect ratio. So to me, these, these are ideally, this is ideally suited for portraiture, and this is ideally suited for, for landscape in this, in this mode here. But again, you can use them however you want. But so the purpose of what I'm doing here today is uh, I'm going to photograph these murals. I'm going to take a couple in the sun. We're going to test to see how the cameras meter for the direct sunlight. It's like right now the sun is this way behind the camera. Obviously it's shining on the wall. I'll go around to the opposite side of the building while the sun is still kind of low. It's early morning. The sun is still kind of low on the horizon. So I'll be in complete shade. I'll take photos of murals that are in complete shade. Okay, so again, I'll just, I'll pan a little bit and show you the wall. And then I'll, right here, literally, just a few feet to my left, camera right, is Mexico. And I'll show you, you can't see the fence, the border, because of this berm, but it's, it's right here to my left. So I'm just showing you now a little bit of the the wall this is only a few feet again this is there's a half a mile I encourage you to come here on Google Maps uh, 1601 East 4th Street and uh, Google Maps El Paso Texas 1601 East 4th Avenue actually and you can just use the little yellow guy in the in the lower right corner and just actually circumnavigate the the building and see what it's all about but that's Mexico right right beyond that that berm is Mexico just a few feet across the highway Okay, so that's how close we are to the Mexican border here in El Paso. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and fire the cameras up, and we'll get to testing. Thank you. Okay, so welcome back. I'm back from uh, the, my photo adventure this morning, so we'll cover the cameras themselves, okay? So I have here the Polaroid One Step 2. This is the new iteration that uh, just came out. Okay, I, I got the last one from Best Buy, a local Best Buy store was literally the last one and it was kind of misplaced. They had to dig around to find it and they found it behind some locked frosted glass so I was fortunate that this was the last one. Okay so let's cover the different features and such. So this is the flash, this is the shutter button, self timer, infrared LED, this is the lens of course and you can see it's kind of coated there. This is the the viewfinder, lighten and darken, this yellow button. This is the light meter this is the film door latch, so the way you open it is just right here. It's like a kind of a, a jaw, and the film the film goes the cassette goes in in this little thing here. There's an arrow on it to help you out, and you can just reclose it like this. Okay, so let's go around the camera. The viewfinder is absolutely superb in this camera. It's it's a it's a like 100% coverage. So not only is the is the element beautifully clear you can see through this so easily it's a whizzy wig right like what you see is what you get so it's 100 percent you don't have to do any kentucky windage as far as up and down and left and right so it's almost a perfect coverage and that's i really enjoy that about the camera so this right now is currently powered off 
you push this yellow button down and that powers it on. You can tell it's prepping. Okay, so it's charged. The flash is ready to fire. The camera is on. There's no film in here, but if there, if there was film, if it was a fresh pack, all eight of these would be lit. Okay, then when you take an exposure, then one of the lights goes out and seven lights remain on, so forth and so on. So the number of lights on tells you how many exposures are left in the cassette. Okay? Um, and the, the, uh, what I really like about this camera, so here's the override. This is The flash will always be on on this camera. You have to press this button here. This is the flash override. You press that and you override the flash. And I'm sorry about this focus here. I'm, I'm having some focus issues. Okay. And here is the charging port. Down here is the charging port. This doesn't take AA or AAA batteries. You, like a cell phone, you plug it into a, an AC adapter and then you plug this in here and this is how it charges. So the two primary differences between this and the Instax 300 are the way it charges or the power source, right? like this is this is charged here. The Instax 300 takes either AA or AAA batteries, I can't remember at the moment, but they're disposable batteries and this flash is always on. You have to override the flash and with the Instax 300 it's the opposite. It's, it's off and you have to place it in the on position. So, uh, oh, the, so the main thing here, so let's talk about uh, the lessons learned from the photo tour, is there's a little, it's like a window shade, an old-fashioned window shade here. And what happens is when the, when the dark slide first comes out, when you first use the camera, this dark slide will eject. And it's going to be covered completely by this little window shade, right? And what happens is when you remove this and all the subsequent images, this little shade, it, it rolls up like a window shade and goes back into the camera and it's ready for the next exposure. Well, if you're not familiar with it, especially most of us, we don't read instructions, right? We kind of take things intuitively. Well, you might think it's disposable and you might rip that out the very first time you use the camera and this dark slide comes out that little piece of film, that little piece of plastic is going to be on top of it and you might be tempted to rip everything out at the same time and you'll damage the camera. So this little piece of black plastic, when it comes out, make sure you don't tear that out because you'll tear it out of the camera and it's not supposed to be torn out, it's a part of the camera. And secondly is I found myself the first few images to, to stabilize the camera like I was holding it like this right basically like this to get a positive grip on it and when the film would come out it was ejecting against my finger so after two or three images you know it was I just forced myself to, to, to you know I started putting my finger under the camera for support and then pressing the shutter button and then the film would come out unobstructed but if you're if you're not used to it at first you're gonna have your finger in the way but that's okay it's part of the learning curve okay so I'll go ahead and power the camera down you just pull, push this button up and it's powered down. Okay, so I'll show you images in just a moment. Let's cover though the, the cameras. So now we go on to the Instax 300. So this is the, the Instax 300. Okay, so we have the, now unlike the Polaroid One Step 2, this actually has the counter. So it'll start out, if you put a fresh film pack in, it'll say 10. Here, I'll power it on now and show you. Okay, so instead of like little lights, it just has a numeric display. It has 10 when it's full, and now I've used two images, so I have eight remaining. Okay, this is the film latch door, the door latch where you open it up. I can't open it up now because I have film in there, and I'll ruin it. This is lighten and darken, if you want to lighten and darken the image. And this is to turn the flash on. You can see I turned it on, turned it back off. That's lighten to lighten the image. That's to darken the image. Right, and then turn off. Okay, so you're lighting and darken and flash. Let's see, moving on. Um, okay, obviously this is the power button. This is the flash. This is the lens element. So let me show you this here too, and this is kind of neat. When you power on the camera, there are two settings. Okay, so the first setting is 0.9 meters. It's difficult to read, but this actually says 0.9 meters to three meters, which is in like in English or Imperial, it would be basically uh, uh, three feet to about nine feet, okay? And if your subject is past that, you just turn the barrel and right there, now you're setting the camera from three meters to infinity. So you have two different focal lengths. You have basically um, 0.3 to one meter and then, oh, wait a minute. So let me, let me, let me, let me take it back out again. So my bad, it was basically one meter to three meters, 
and then three meters to infinity. And I'll show you again how to adjust it. You just turn the barrel. Okay, now I'm going out further for my, for my uh, focus. And then now I'm back in, back in tight for what would be more or less a portrait, right? So your portraits are going to be fairly close. So that would be kind of like your portrait setting. Okay, this is the viewfinder. This has got a pretty terrible viewfinder. Uh, so what it is, is you're going to get, it's not 100% coverage. So here's what happens. The top and bottom are pretty accurate and the right is pretty accurate. But when you look through this, you're going to get more on the left side of the image, more than you bargained for. Okay, so it's going to it's going to truncate it's going to cut short the viewfinder and when you get again when you get the final image there's going to be more to the left okay so you just got to get used to the camera and uh and deal with it so again the two primary differences here is now on the one step the flash is always on and you have to push that one button that was down remember down here and you have to override flash and here it's the opposite flash is off and you have to physically turn it on Okay, so there's, they differ in what is the default value of the flash and, again, the batteries. Okay, so this has disposable batteries. So if you're out on the go, I like this much better. You're not at the mercy of charging it on a computer USB port or an, or an AC USB port. You can be out all day, and if you have a lot of film, all you do is switch out your batteries, your disposable batteries. Okay, and the power it down. Just turn the button. And the camera powers down okay so that those are the cameras themselves they're both $100 this is basically I think $90 off of Amazon and the one step two was 99 so I'm not gonna you know $9 is not a big difference so I'm not going to get carried away with the cost because it's negligible so let's get into the images themselves because this is the most important okay so let me zoom in Okay, so here's what I found after taking the images. So this is obviously the Instax. The Instax is more rectangular, it's more landscape. And this, again, as I said, this is more your one-to-one -one ratio, like your classic Richard Avedon with the Roly Flex and the Hasselblad, okay? Now, so as you can see, this is a little more muted. This, this came out a little bit more muted than this. This is much more vibrant, okay? The, the images are more vibrant and they pop saturation and these are muted and one thing I noticed too is the this film is is off on its daylight balance so this was actually white this metallic type you know uh, siding on this on Frontier Foods is actually this color it's white and as here you can tell it's more of a yellowish and the overall cast this overall cast of this image is yellow Right, it's got this yellowish tint where the the Kelvin, the Kelvin temperature is wrong. It's off. So this is daylight balanced to about maybe 5,500 Kelvin. Day, daylight is about 5,500 Kelvin, and you can tell by looking at this. This is maybe I don't know, maybe 3,500 to 4,000 Kelvin. So there's about 1,500 1,500 difference in the Kelvin. So this is correct at about 5,500, and this is wrong at about, I'm guessing 3,500, 4,000, okay? So the, the, it's, so it's, it's much more, uh, vibrant. I think this is more accurate, more, uh, color accuracy, more vibrance and saturation. This is how it truly appeared in the daylight. The daylight balance is correct, okay? And the, the Polaroid is off. On to the next one. Okay, this is another mural on the building. Okay. Again, I'm trying to replicate the same shots so to, to keep the comparisons even. Now, this really stands out here. Again, we have the, the, the white balance being off, but the contrast. Look at the contrast in the color reproduction. So, look at the flame. This flame is a brilliant red and yellow, where here it's a little bit softer. It's a little bit more washed out in the face. So, this face is much more contrasty. And this is a little more washed out. And I actually went back because I, I looked at these. Oh, and by the way, these actually take about 30 minutes to fully develop. And I was shocked because these are these are done after, you know, between three to five minutes, these are fully done. And this takes about 30 minutes. And I wasn't in extreme cold or extreme heat. I wasn't in no type of extreme. But it took uh, just an incredibly long time for these to fully develop. So when it was done, long story short, I had to go back. I revisited to say, well, which is the accurate, which is the more accurate reproduction? Did it really look like this, or did it really look like this? So I went back to the mural, 
and it looked like this. So this is actually how it's painted. This is a true and accurate reproduction of the flame and the contrast in the face. You can see the contrast and here it's much more washed out. So again, fail, the Polaroid failed, the Instax won. Okay, moving on. Now those were in the direct sunlight. The first two were in the direct sun. Now I went around the opposite side of the building and I took images that were in the shade. So you have to bear with me on this little reflection here. But you can see here it's the same thing. So uh, this is a little more greenish down here and this is blue, you can see here. We're, we're, like the, the, the colors are starting to get skewed a little bit. Uh, so the actual wall is blue. It was blue, but the Polaroid interpreted as a slightly greenish. So these two, right, this alien and this incubator type thing, whatever this is, with some kind of feeding tube or whatever, these came out basically the same. They're about the same yellow or gold. I mean, they're fairly close. But again, the wall is actually a blue. The, the Instax nailed it, but the Polaroid recorded it as a green, like a, a, a greenish color. So that was another fail. Okay, moving on, a uh, little bit down the wall was this image here, another incubator type image, okay? And we're getting back, and I'm sorry about this glare up here, that's just the glare from my overhead light. But I turned it, so I turned the, the camera to be in a, like a portrait type of a mode, right? Because this is, if the camera is level, it would look like this. And you just turn it sideways as you would with any other camera to get a portrait mode, right? So this is the Instax, Instax nailed it, look how clean, look how crisp this image is. And the Polaroid kind of failed. It's a little bit washed out. There's look how look how defined this image is. The focus, the clarity. The Instax nailed it. Polaroid didn't. Polaroid missed. Okay, so right now we've covered four images, and the score is Instax four, Polaroid zero. Okay, so now I went and I just did a general. Okay, so now I'm not photographing any murals. I just photographed an intersection. It's the same building, but I photographed the intersection. So, this is the Instax. Instax nailed it, okay? And I want you to see two things here. One, look at the ground, how much more of the ground is illuminated. And here the ground is a little bit darker. The sky, the sky is a real blue with the clouds. And here again, we're getting this green. The, color, the Polaroid interpreted the clouds as, as this greenish color. Look here, the clouds are white. And here they were greenish cast, okay? And look at the definition in the building. You can see all kinds of definition in these murals, right? These are aerosol cans, and these are the like two little figures. The Instax nailed it. It's getting all the definition out of this wall in the Polaroid. It's just all a, it's like a smudge, okay? It didn't, it was not able to nail the, the focus and, and, and extract the details out of this wall like the Instax did. Look at the details here near this truck, and here the details are lost, okay? So now the score is 5 nothing Instax. And lastly, so I, I, I wanted to photograph a person. So I'm driving and I saw this guy, he was holding a sign. He was more like, you know, they pay these guys to hold signs and he was holding a sign for a mattress store. And actually, I pulled over to photograph these, right? And the gentleman was there and he struck up a conversation with me. I said, hey, would you mind if I photograph you? He said, sure, no problem. So the guy was very friendly, extremely friendly. and He allowed me to photograph him. So let's go ahead, let me, I got it backward here. So I took a picture, again, now do you remember the default value of the flash? The default value of the, of the Instax is off, and the default value of the Polaroid is on. So here I thought the camera would, would, it would recognize, right, because I had the, like the little, the little center weighted thing on him, but the camera interpreted the sky, the camera read the sky, and exposed for the sky and took my subject in complete darkness. Now, I should have, in hindsight, I should have just manually turned the flash on and it would have corrected this. Lesson learned, okay? So, my bad on that one. But the good thing is with the one step, I didn't have to do anything. The, the flash automatically fires. And you can see here it, it fired and it, it caught the gentleman, right? It's a proper, well, I shouldn't say it's proper, but at least you can see the gentleman's face here, okay? His name is Enrique. And again, he's a friendly guy, just a nice friendly guy. But you can see the yield sign. There's a yield sign here. Look how clear the Instax nailed the yield sign here. It's kind of, but you know, that's part of the charm of the Polaroid 
is that you know there's some there's some the color reproduction isn't you know isn't that great so here the one step wins this image just by the default value of the flash being on so now the score I think is what now five to one five to one in stacks so what I did is I kind of cheated well I, still I didn't really cheat but I just asked the gentleman to step back and I photographed him in sunlight so you know he's further back of course and he wanted one for, for himself so that's why I'm one image short on the actually two images short because I dropped one and this one right he wanted one to take home with him I said okay hey no problem so I gave him one to take home so I only have six images to show you instead of eight okay so you can see here that you know this is again this is more accurate the colors are more accurate the image is much clearer but again the, the saving grace of this image was the flash was in the automatic on position okay so that's about it um, so here so let me summarize let me go back to some of the murals so that I can kind of make my point a little bit clearer. The uh, so with 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 the images. Okay, so this is what's going to be Polaroid's undoing. I'll tell you now, because I'm an investor and right, and you know you got to kind of know the market and such. So here's my point: the the color, the white balance is spot on. The the vi the vibrance and saturation are good and the color reproduction is excellent. This recorded the scene perfectly, my Instax white. This, the white balance is wrong, the image is flat, there's no contrast, and the color reproduction is wrong. So there's a lot wrong with, with going on with the Polaroid. Now here's the price difference. The price difference, so the, a cassette of 10 costs $10. So this exposure is, every time you press the shutter button, it's costing one US dollar. Again, if you're in the United States now, again, in foreign countries, the price is going to vary. But here in the U.S., if you buy through Amazon, it comes up to $1 per image. This, the film comes in cassettes of eight, and the film is $16. So it's literally twice as much. So every time you price the, the shutter, it's $2 coming out of the front of that camera. And I can't justify the difference. I cannot absolutely just. This is a cleaner image. It's a much more beautiful image. It's a more accurate image at one dollar per exposure and this fails miserably it's a it's a it's a worse image photographically it's it's inferior and plus it costs two dollars an image so it's a it's a huge fail